Hello everyone, welcome to GoTerran TV. This is Dr. T, PhD, the Prodigy Sports Psychology, welcoming you for a very special edition, week number four in the series of the academic research study of the self-determination of millennials and the realization of their personal training goals. As you know, that was my dissertation study that I had published in the peer-reviewed journal of performance psychology, which I'll be sharing with you here momentarily as we delve into week number four. But just backtracking a bit, in the first three weeks, we've already seen the first three of 10 key strategic points in my qualitative descriptive study, including the first three participants of the 10 in the sample. And that leads me to telling you what is the fourth key strategic point here in week number four as we examine participant number four, and that is the sample. That's what I'm going to discuss here momentarily before we jump into the audio recording with that fourth participant. So let me go ahead and just tell you what the sample is, and that is the fourth of 10 key strategic points in a dissertation study. And in this particular one, the way that I derived that was to first look at the population of interest. And trimming that down from there, I went to the target population, which was examining millennials working with a personal trainer and also trying to achieve goals here in Atlanta, Georgia. To gather that target population, the first step in data collection was casting the net out and trying to gather 50 participants who were willing to participate in this study. The way I had started that was by going onto a program platform software called Amazon Mechanical Turk. This was introduced to me, ironically, by one of my millennial personal training clients who encouraged me to kind of study this and maybe use this for my academic study, which I did. And so after I realized how Amazon Mechanical Turk works, I went ahead and integrated that into my study to use as data collection. And what this is, for those of you who are familiar with other programs such as uh, SurveyMonkey, for example, that's kind of what Amazon Mechanical Turk is. But I like to call Amazon Mechanical Turk SurveyMonkey on steroids because not only does it do the survey for you, but it also encompasses all of the recruitment materials that are involved in a research study. And I'll get to that in a moment here. But again, going back to the population of interest, the first step was gathering the 50 participants via Amazon Mechanical Turk and to fill out a demographic questionnaire. From there, after filling out the demographic questionnaire, the next step was to follow up and determine who were the 10 to 15 final sample participants that I wanted in my study to invite back on a Zoom audio recording call as I'm doing today. And how did I get to those? Well, let me go ahead and tell you first the first 50 participants had filled out a general demographic questionnaire including information on how much body fat percentage they had lost and how much weight they had also lost in conjunction. There was a formula calculation and that was on one side of the composite goal. The other side of that was filling out a 24 point Likert scale which was offered by the Center for Self-Determination Theory and what this was was a again 24 point a questionnaire that asked on a scale one through five questions about components of self-determination including autonomy, competence, and relatedness. And so what I did, if it looks like an illustration, you have one side of their composite of body fat percentage and weight loss and in that achievement I combined it and tried to gather with the scores of who scored the highest on self-determination theory. In conjunction, this was determined which was the best practices, and after I gathered the final 10 to 15 with the highest composite score of best practices, those were the 10 to 15 participants that I reached out to to invite back and ask if they'd like to participate anonymously, of course, so that way they could go ahead and be interviewed via Zoom, and I can ask them the questions that we're hearing each week here on that final sample. I said 10 to 15 because I had approximately five participants as backup included 10 who could not show up, but all 10 did. And so with that, here is participants number four that we're going to show you momentarily. And before I do so, I'd like to ask everyone out there, if you please be so kind as to like this video, leave us a comment and share it with all of your friends and family out there. So without any further ado, let's jump into the audio recording with participant number four here as we look into this sample a little bit more with deeper detail. I am recording right now. It's recording, and I'm here with our participant for this study of the self-determination of millennials achieving their personal training goals. I have the participant on the line right now, and can the participant please go ahead and respond if you can hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you. 
Great. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, your time. And we're going to jump into the interview. But before we do, uh, I just want to let you know a few uh, housekeeping things. Um, and uh, this will take a few minutes just to cover before we go right into the interview questions. Um, as we're recording this on Zoom, uh, we are only getting your audio recording. So at no time at all, am I ever going to ask you by your name? Uh, your name will be kept confidential and, and uh, will not be shared at any time. Um, you can stop this interview anytime you'd like. Um, you do not need to volunteer any information that you feel uncomfortable with or don't want to share. But the purpose of this study is to examine how individuals such as yourself describe self-determination as a contributor to realizing their pers uh, current personal training goals. The length of the interview will be approximately 40 to 60 minutes. The interview will go as such. I'll ask you each research question and provide you with an opportunity to answer it in full. And I'll also ask you probing questions or follow-up questions. Um, and the uh, again, some of these questions might be repetitive. They might sound redundant, but it's really a matter of just reiterating and reinforcing your answers just to provide clarity um, that I have them uh, uh, down correctly. Um, at the end of the interview, I'll give you an opportunity to ask any questions um, when we conclude with the interview. And when I stop the interview, I'll hit the stop button, but I would like you to please stay on the line with me when we're done. Um, so that way we can just take care of um, any of the other housekeeping uh, details for the technology that we're recording on and such. Um, and but prior to uh, us moving forward, uh, first of all, participant, can you please verify yes or no uh, were you given the informed consent form for the survey that you filled out for us yes okay and um you also were given the informed consent form for the interview can you please confirm yes or no if you understand and acknowledge everything that uh, is involved in the interview as well yes Okay, wonderful. Thank you uh, for confirming that information. We have your survey and also your demographic questionnaire. On, uh, at the end of the interview, I'm gonna confirm the answers you gave us to the demographic questionnaire, just to make sure that we have the right information. Uh, when we finish the interview, I'm gonna stop and um, you will get a copy of our transcript. I'd like to uh, provide you the copy of the transcript of our interview. And the purpose of that is to do something what we call member checking, in other words, I want to ensure that you could read our transcripts, and um, if you have an opportunity, you can read over it just to make sure that everything was answered uh, in the context that you meant for it to be answered. So, for example, if you look at the transcript and you say, you know, I really didn't, shouldn't have answered it that way, I think this would be a better answer, you'll have time to modify that if you'd like to in the future uh, for any reason. Um, the survey that you provided for us before we jumped in the interview, this was a 24-question uh, Likert scale on a scale of one through five of uh, not true at all to completely true. And that's what I'm going to be pulling off here uh, momentarily. Uh, what we wanted to do was to figure out what uh, level of self-determination you have as a millennial. And because you scored so highly on your scores, for both this survey as well as your attainment goal for your um, specifically body fat percentage and weight loss. Um, this brings us now to being able to delve into how self-determination ties into personal training. So for example, um, the first research question that we have, you've already answered. In other words, research question number one for our study is how do millennials describe their self-determination in terms of autonomy, competence, and relatedness? And we got your answers through the survey. So as we move forward now to the research question number two, this is where we're really gonna start the interview questions. And the research question number two specifically is how do millennials describe autonomy as a contributor to realizing their personal training goals? So. Before I ask you the very first question that goes along with this research question for the interview, let me tell you what autonomy means, what we're looking for um, as far as autonomy, which again, you scored very highly on for yourself for self-determination. Autonomy, according to self-determination theory, is the desire to be causal agents of one's own life and act in harmony with one's integrated self. So in layman's terms, kind of to uh, what does that mean 
let's bring this down into a little bit better understanding. Somebody who is autonomous or has high level of autonomy is usually very independent and very aware of themselves and makes decisions intrinsically, meaning they're very motivated by themselves rather than having to be motivated by someone else. So for example, um, someone who doesn't have a high level of autonomy might not be comfortable of making their own choices and decisions. And so now we're going to tie this to personal training. So my first interview question is this. Can you describe whether you had some degree of autonomy or to what degree your autonomy was during your personal training program? Was it zero? Was it some, small, moderate, large? What did that look like to you? Um, I'd say large. Okay. I'd definitely say large. And, and to, to further illustrate, you know, having a large autonomy for your personal training program. And again, anytime, if you feel like we need the question repeated, or if, um, you know, there's more clarity needed, um, kind of expound now, please, and describe, um, you, you know, the large level of autonomy you have uh, for personal training during your program. So for example, um, just to, you can go this route if you'd like, you know, was it your own decision to hire your personal trainer? Was it your own decision to create your own program with your trainer? Things of that nature. What can, Just kind of uh, paint a picture for us, please, on your own autonomy and independence when it comes to working with uh, your personal trainer, please. Um, so I would definitely say I had a big, a big input on to kind of how we trained and what, what the focus was on. So um, I really just wanted to have a better understanding of how my, um, you know, how to work out different parts of my body, how to, how to lose weight, um, without, you know, losing too much because to start off with, I was about, uh, I want to say I was about 178, 180. So I didn't want to lose too, too much weight. Um, and I I really told him that the focus was to, to kind of go ahead. No, 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 no. That's okay. I, I, yeah, I I understand. Yeah. Please continue. Mm -hmm. I got you. Um, I was telling, I was asking him, you know, I kind of want to do a program where I, I lose weight, but, um, you know, kind of focus on, on strength building as, as well. And he kind of adjusted a program and and meals and and such around, around those goals. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this, how about the, uh, sense of choice and freedom in those goals? Did you feel like you had a lot of input on that or no input or somewhere in the middle? How did that look like between you and your trainer as far as your sense of choice and freedom? I, f- I feel like I had a, a, a great deal of choice, um, but at the same time, I wanted to, you know, have faith and trust in him that he'd help me reach the goals that I was, you know, trying to reach. Um, but I, I'd say that I had, you know, good input on at least what, what the focus was on. But um, again, I kind of wanted to let him do his thing and then have trust in him that, that he'd help me, you know, design a program that'll help me reach those goals. Mm-hmm. That's good. And you just mentioned the word trust there. I just want to uh, focus on that word for a second. Uh, how important was uh, that level of trust between you and your personal trainer? Was that an important component all along? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, and the person who actually trained me, he, he's a, he's one of my cousins. He used to play football. Um, he's a little older than me. So it was somebody that I kind of looked up to a little bit and, and trusted to begin with. So I think that was, uh, you know, a big factor of why I even kind of reached out to him for the personal training thing, which mm, the mm, trust okay. factor. Interesting. Okay. And let me ask you this. Um, you know, specifically to your personal training program, the decisions you made in terms of what exercises, how many times a week to meet, things of that nature, do you feel like those decisions, would you say that was a reflection of what you, what you really wanted? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I knew I just, because I, I worked out on my own, you know, pretty much my whole life, and I just mm-hmm. wanted to have I just kind of wanted to connect with someone who was professional in this field. And that's why I kind of asked them just, you know, one time a week, just so I could have a better understanding of how to, um, how it should go about 
doing exercises and eating right on my own. So I was kind of just using that that stint of the personal training to kind of give myself a guideline on how I should do it myself moving forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me ask you this question. Um, can you recall any times if uh, there were any times where you might have felt you were forced to do any types of uh, exercises in the program or eat a certain way that wouldn't have been your first choice? Did that ever happen at any time during the program? Uh, no, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, some of the exercises were really hard or some of the, you know, I'd rather eat a pizza than, you know, a piece of grilled chicken and, and brown rice or something. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I knew those are the things that needed to be done in order for me to reach my goals at the end of the day. So, mm -hmm. um, I feel like that was more important than me trying to pig out or me, you know, not want to complete an exercise because it was too hard. Mm -hmm. Good. Let me ask you this question too, um, in terms of autonomy. Um, do you feel like your interests aligned with, uh, what your personal training program, uh, turned out to be? So for example, um, you have your personal training program. Did it parallel and really get in sync with your specific interests? As far as what, what my goals were? Yes, goals, but not only goals, but also what you really enjoy and value and what you deem to be very important. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'd say it did because it was, you know, it was a mix of different things. Sometimes it was, um, well, a lot of the time it was a gym, but then we also got to incorporate other things that I enjoy, such as uh, we did like really, really long bike rides. I got into biking after that, um, mm -hmm. swimming. So these are some things that I enjoy that was, you know, that were able to be in um, incorporated in the program, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Let me ask you this question. Um, and again, we're still uh, on autonomy here. Um, was there any point in time? And if there was, uh, just kind of, uh, can you give us an example? Did it feel like your personal training program ever felt like a chain of obligations? Or, for example, did it ever feel to you that it was something that uh, you just weren't motivated to do because uh, even though you know it was right for you, it just felt like you were having to work and do tasks. And again, just feeling like a chain of obligations. At any point, did that ever come into play in your program? Um, I wouldn't say I felt obligated that I had to, to like meet with my trainer or anything like that. I think it kind of falls along the lines of kind of how we all do like oh do I really feel like going to the gym today do I really feel like working out today mm -hmm. it was more so of that thing um just a you know sometimes personally I may not be up to you know just exercising that day um but I didn't feel you know I didn't feel that due to the to the actual program it was just kind of like if I were doing it on my own I may have not gone to the gym that day but since I had a personal trainer I did actually go Mm, okay, good. Let me ask you this too, you know, um, was there any time during your program that you felt like outside forces um, interfered with your own autonomy and independence during your personal training program? Did anything ever factor in or um, negatively, adversely, uh, whether it was hurt or impact your program? Did anything like that ever happen can, that you could think of? Um, could you explain that a little bit more? Sure. So for example, um, you know how some people, their autonomy is challenged when things happen that are out of their control. So for example, if let's just use myself, the researcher here for an example, I need, I want to go to the gym. I know that's right. And I have a high level autonomy, but yet, um, the weather is horrible outside or, there is a advisory not to go to the gym for any reason, or the gym is shut down and closed, or my trainer is moved, or my trainer is sick, or any of thing that you can think of to where during your program, something happened that interfered. Um, did, did that happen? Maybe it did not happen um, during that entire time. Uh, yeah, there, there were a few times. Um, I remember one time my trainer was sick. Another time I had to go out of town. Um, and, you know, the whole COVID thing, when, when that first started, that was uh, 
that was kind of a hiccup for a little bit but mm, um mm, mm-hmm. so yeah the more so of sickness vacation and then you know the the whole covid thing mm, mm, interesting yes and um on that covid subject um did would you say that that had affected um your routine your schedule that you had to adjust and make an autonomous decision to uh, do something different or change up your workout or not necessarily? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would usually train with my trainer in the, um, my, my complex as a gym that was closed for a pretty long time. Um, mm-hmm. you know, my, my trainer and I weren't really comfortable, you know, being in a, a small setting, kind of working out, you know, when, when that stuff first happened. So mm-hmm. I had to pretty much, I, I ordered some, some, uh, perfect push-ups, pull-up bars. Um, I did a lot, a lot of running outside, a lot more bike riding. So I definitely had to switch up my um, my workout routine for sure. Ah, okay, good, good. Okay, let me ask you this uh, before we move on to the next component of self determination. My my uh, other thing I want to ask you about autonomy is, um, again, this specifically has to do with your autonomy. Um, how successful were you achieving? Um, you in achieving your goals thanks to autonomy. So for example, what I mean by that specifically is with losing weight and losing your body fat, um, how successful were you thanks to autonomy? Did autonomy, would you say, play a role in it? Not at all, maybe a little bit, maybe some, maybe a lot. Where would you rank that if you had to in terms of how autonomy uh, affected you to achieve your personal training goals? Um, I'd say to the highest degree um Mm -hmm. because you know you can the thing about working out is you know you literally get what you put into it Mm -hmm. so you know i couldn't could have um you know not gone as hard as i could but then the results would be would reflect that or i could you know just kind of go completely stray of what the nutrition plan was and start eating my own you know whatever i wanted to so you know i think just um, my, my own decisions were definitely, uh, a huge, huge factor into, uh, reaching my goals. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Well, I want you to please, um, keep autonomy in the back of your mind. Um, as we get to the end of the, um, interview, I'm going to bring that back and tie that in to how that's our, uh, one of three components in self-determination, but let's move on now to the second component of self-determination, uh, theory, and that's competence. And, So on research question number three, the question is, how do millennials describe competence as a contributor to realizing their personal training goals? Um, And on this um, competence, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the definition as far as what that means uh, according to self-determination theory. Uh, Competence means uh, one who seeks to control the outcome and experience mastery. So For example, that means somebody who is trying to master a skill, or in this case, maybe it's trying to master an exercise or master the art of eating correctly, Um, trying to improve a skill set, in this case of uh, one's personal training, uh, and and just be more competent or even confident. That's another synonym that goes along with the word competence, how well you understand and know um, that um, uh, certain skill that you're trying to master. So my question to you on this one, and again, if anything um, needs more clarity or if I need to uh, give another definition or example, please let me know. But um, can you please describe whether you had some degree of competence um, during your personal training program? And if so, uh, was it high? Was it medium, small? Or was there no level of competence uh, that contributed to your personal training program? Um, I definitely said there was some. I'm not going to say I was a uh, master by any means, but, mm-hmm. um, so, you know, well, as we were, go- as he was showing me like new exercises and stuff, he was kind of explaining what, what muscle group, um, we were working on, um, with nutrition, you know, he would kind of explain, you know, looking at things from each different meal, why you choose to, you know, why I should choose to go with, you know, this type of food opposed to this type of food. Um, mm-hmm. And then I would kind of do some research on my own and um, kind of built up my, my own knowledge as well. So I, I, I think, yeah, um, I feel like I was pretty competent. Mm-hmm. And 
on the uh, survey that you um, uh, gave to us initially, as far as competence uh, as it uh, pertains to yourself for self-determination, uh, for example, I'll read one of these here. Um, when it asked, I feel competent to achieve my goals, you gave it a score of five, which is completely true on the scale, meaning that really strongly agrees and aligns with how you feel. Um, would you say then, is that fair to assume that uh, that's the same as far as personal training? In other words, my question to you is, did you feel strongly competent in wanting to achieve your personal training goals? Uh, yes. So, so, okay. I guess I need a little bit of a better understanding of this. So, um, are you saying like the, the competence as far as me, um, like understanding what we were doing and why we were doing it during the personal training? Yes, uh, exactly. Like how well you understood how to master, uh, in your, this case, right. Um, achieving those personal training goals. That's exactly right. Okay. So I, I'd like to shift that to about a between the three and four range because I definitely um, I definitely increased my knowledge a whole lot, but I wouldn't consider myself a, a master of completely understanding, you know, every every single little aspect of it of what we were doing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and for example, um, let's just say this uh, hypothetically: um, if you at this point, after everything you've learned with your personal trainer. Um, you are now the personal trainer. You put yourself in the role of, okay, you're the personal trainer and a beginner novice walks into the gym. How competent do you feel that you would be able to train and instruct that novice, that beginner, so that that person, he or she, would be able to improve their own level of competence to the degree that you did? Um, I'd feel pretty confident about it. I think mm -hmm. I could do it. Um, I guess it also depends on what their specific goals are too, because I know, you know, when I worked with my trainer, it was pretty specific of what I wanted to do, but I also know, you know, other people may have different goals, but if someone had walked in and had the same type of goals and type of situation I had going on, I, I feel pretty confident um, about, uh, about, about training them and, and getting their knowledge up to the, to the point where mine's is now. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, my next question to you is this. Um, how confident and capable did you feel in performing the exercises overall in your personal training program? Um, it definitely grew at first. It was, mm -hmm. it was, uh, I was a little uneasy and um, not as confident because like I said, although I worked out on my own, I didn't, there were a lot of exercises that I haven't tried before. Um, uh -huh. and, you know, you just feel kind of awkward and, and weird doing it sometimes when you're doing motions and movements that you're not, used to or you may not be as strong as you thought you were um you know doing some of these newer exercises but over time I feel like I grew more confident for sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how about this on the flip side of it um can you think of any times ever during the program that you might have felt disappointed with any of the uh, performances of your exercises during the program yeah so I remember specifically when we started on like doing legs. Uh -huh. I was definitely not a big leg person at all. Okay. Um, so when I very first started that, it was a little discouraging because um, I just felt, you know, really, really weak in that area. Um, so that that was, that's definitely one of the times in the beginning doing legs. I was like, this is, this is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Good example. And um, how about this question here? Um, let's talk about the security of your abilities for a second. And this is still tying into competence. Um, you mentioned briefly a few minutes ago about feeling you know, competent to achieve your goals. And on the flip side of that, was there any uh, time ever that you could think about where you might have felt insecure about your abilities to perform any of the exercises? Did insecurity or inadequacy ever come up uh, to play as a challenge for your abilities specifically? Um, uh, I'd, I'd say maybe once, once uh, weight increased here and there, or again, just kind of with the, the leg thing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I, I guess there was a, a bit of a, a confidence you know, kind of, kind of a, a insecurity or, or a confidence blow to begin when, 
you know, new things were getting getting introduced. And I was, like I said, kind of didn't feel as strong as I thought I would perf- uh, do as well as I thought I would perform. So I think that came into to play. Good. Now on that, um, you mentioned about when new exercises would come into play and, and new ways to do it. Let's say today going forward, um, do, how competent do you feel moving forward when there are yet to be, let's face it with exercising, personal training, you know, it, it's, I'm assuming that's a never ending, uh, you know, challenge. There's always something new to uh, learn. How competent do you feel now with new uh, ways to do things and moving forward? Would you think uh, that yourself as uh, even more competent now to uh, get better or is it the same or uh, not the same? Like, how do you feel in terms of improving your competence level now? From this oh uh way better because now i know i mean we're not all going to be pros or masters that's something when we first started off as, uh, you know when you're first doing something but mm-hmm. eventually you know you keep on doing it you're, you're going to get better you know you're mm-hmm. not just going to keep on doing something and you're going to get worse <laughs> so mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. yes yeah, so i i i think it, it'd be it, it will it is actually better going forward because you know, now I kind of just jump into things and um, just know that I'm going to get better at it. Good, good. Okay. And um, on the flip side of, um, you know, the uh, being able to uh, complete uh, any of the tasks that were difficult, because you kind of went into that a little bit earlier. um, Was there any times where during the program, you might have felt like a failure or that you had failed because of any mistakes that you had accidentally made? that, that were totally unintentional or inadvertent that um, was there a time where you felt like uh, you just failed at something during the program because of a mistake that you'd made? Uh, no, I wouldn't say a mistake or inadvertent. Mm-hmm. If anything, I would say it would be some of the eating stuff, which mm-hmm. is, you know, completely on me. So mm-hmm. if, if, you, if you want to call that a mistake, but I was knowing what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and let me ask, you know, on the eating too, um, would you rate that harder uh, for most people in terms of uh, the, compared to the uh, fitness aspect of it? The exercises are exercising and eating is one harder than the other in terms of, uh, you know, being able to master that skill or is, uh, are they equal or is that kind of an indifferent question? Uh, honestly, I think it just depends on the person. Mm-hmm. I really think it depends on the person. Um I know for some people they can, you know, they have no problem going into the gym and, and working out, but then the eating part, you know, that the, there's really no f- food discipline. Uh huh. Um, for for me, I would say, um, I, w- I would say that the food discipline would would probably be a, like me. That would be a little more difficult. Okay. Than, okay. than me going into the gym. Oh, interesting. Okay. And my last question on competence here on this second component of the three. Um, it, it's almost the same question I asked about autonomy here at the end of that section. Um, I want to conclude by asking this subsection, how, uh, when it comes to competence, uh, how successful were you at, in achieving your personal training goals? Thanks to your level of competence. Um, I'd say that it, it, it played a, a really big factor, mm. um, mm-hmm. I definitely say it played a big factor and more so, like I said, kind of more so from the nutrition side mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than the, than the working out. Um, I, I learned a, a whole lot from, um, you know, j- just from, from choosing different meals and you can actually really see the difference mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. your body, how you feel. Um, and then once I had a better understanding of that, I started, you know, making sure that I tried my best to eat better and then, um, I think that definitely played a big role in, in me achieving my goals. Good, good. Okay, excellent. Um, now I'd like us to move on to the third of the three components of self-determination theory known as relatedness. Now, um, research question number four is how do millennials describe relatedness as a contributor to realizing their personal training goals? So uh, when we talk about relatedness, and again, please let me know if I need to uh, give another example or define it better, but I'll go ahead and give you the de- uh, definition uh, according to self-determination theory. It's the willingness to interact with, 
be connected to and experience care for others. In other words, another synonym that goes along with relatedness is belongingness, um, the need to belong, the need and social desirability to be with others and have them care for you and vice versa, to have an interpersonal relationship. So in terms of relatedness on that question, on relatedness, um, once again, on your survey, you scored uh, very high on that. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, let's just give you one of the survey questions you answered. Uh, quote, I feel that the people I care about also care about me. You scored that at a five, completely true, meaning strongly agree with in terms of how your self-determination is thanks to relatedness. So um, my question to you next now is the interview question here. Can you please describe whether you had some degree of relatedness or to what degree relatedness was? For example, was there none at all? Was it small? Was it moderate? Was it large? How much relatedness, if any, um, had a role or a factor in your personal training program? Um, so relatedness is, okay, maybe I need a better, mm -hmm. I, I need to kind of better understand this. One. Sure. Um, so let's give an example of this because what we're looking at here is, and let's face it, we're here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Uh, a lot of us have the selection of choosing um, personal trainers. There's so many of them here in Atlanta. And uh, you had mentioned um, having the uh, great advantage of uh, the cousin, your cousin being able to um, uh, personal train you. Um, what We're looking at the relatedness between you and your cousin specifically who's training you. So uh, we're looking at the relationship that you have with uh, your trainer. We're looking at how your trainer relates to you, how you relate to him how important that sense of belonging is as a factor. Um, we're looking at the um, uh, warmth and care and level of uh, um, caringness that he exudes to you and vice versa, what that relationship looks like. So basic, we're, basically in layman's terms, we're looking at how you relate to your trainer. That's what we're looking at in this question here. Okay, gotcha. Then I, mm -hmm. I think it was it was really high then because um, mm -hmm. you know just just us being family, mm -hmm. um, you know there was a closer bond, but then I didn't have to like have to grow to get to know this person. This is a person I've known my whole life, um, so you know automatically we're you know really really close. Um, like I said, trust was big, so I think the relatedness definitely played a a, a high factor in in the program. Good. I, I'm going to ask you uh, probably a hard question here to answer, and it, please take your time uh, in answering this. You know, when uh, you move in with someone, for example, like into an apartment or a home together, you learn so much new about that person that you really thought you knew that person. Was there any ever a time that you could think of once you got into your personal training program with your trainer, and although he was family and you grew up with him and you knew him most of your life, was there a moment where it surprised you and you learned something new about your trainer, your cousin, or vice versa? Was there a shocking realization or some kind of unhidden truth that was revealed during the uh, personal training process and program with your trainer? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, from, from us both, um, probably mm. more um, insight into each other's uh, relationships with our significant others. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He kind of just went into details about certain things that he's been through growing up, um, kind of medical, um, uh, different medical experiences or, or things that have happened to, uh, to, to, to both of us that we didn't know about each other before. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it uh, definitely brought some things to light that we didn't know about each other for sure. Interesting. Now, um, I kind of want to go into that a little bit here. Um, how would you say you were each mutually connected with each other? Uh, was there a mutual connection there? And if so, um, what did that look like? If you can kind of illustrate that for us. A mutual connection. Um, yeah. So he here's an example. Um, can you go into the level of, and describe the, the level of care that you and your personal trainer shared with each other? What was there? I'm assuming there was, um, but uh, if there was a level of care, what did that look like between both of you? 
Um, so a, a level of care of just caring about each other. Yes, and and here's here, let's let's ask. Yeah, definitely. That and here's probably a better uh, sub question to that. Um, how much did your trainer take your goals into consideration uh, and could relate to you? So, for example, um, your trainer. Do you believe that he took your goals as important as his own and uh, therefore could relate to you? Or do you think maybe your goals were almost important to him and he still was going to give you that level of care? Or um, what did that relationship look like if, if we were to ask him that question? Um, I think that it... <sighs> I guess it's kind of hard to, to say because I guess my um like how 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 much he carved out like specific or or how niche that he made the the actual program for for myself I I couldn't say I I think my goals were so um like I said I kind of already went to the gym just needed a little bit more direction uh huh so I I think it was of course my goals and stuff were important to him but I don't think that it was something that, um, you know, he had to put a whole lot of time in, in thinking about how we're going to map this thing out. It was more so of, okay, let me give him some pointers on how to mm. do X, Y, Z, how to eat better. Uh -huh. um, more so of that thing than like a really, really, you know, um, he has to really dig in and, and come up with all types of, you know, creative ways and, and, and a, a whole new dynamic program. It was kind of just, okay, we're going to go to the gym. I'm going to show him some, some techniques. I'm going to, like I said, kind of teach him how to eat better and, mm -hmm. you know, that type of thing. Good, good. Um, let me ask you this. Um, would you say that he exuded a level of uh, closeness and uh, presented a warm experience during the personal training uh, exercise sessions? Yeah, definitely. For sure. How would you describe that? Can you give us some examples of what that looked like? Like, for example, um, if somebody wanted to train with him, let's say a potential client, and they say, how is your trainer? I want to hire them. And in your mind, you're thinking, you know, if they ask you, like, I want someone who's warm and caring and understands my needs and can relate to me. What would your answer be to that person if you were describing your trainer? I'd say um, he, he'd definitely be the, the person that, that you don't want to work with. But at the same time, um, it's kind of like a, a a tough love thing because he's, I mean, he, he's still gonna like really want to push you to to do the things that you may not, um, like I was kind of saying before, be comfortable with doing at first or mm -hmm. something like that. But you know, he he cares about your goals. He cares about what you what you're trying to um, achieve, and he's kind of not gonna be the one to water it down or or. Uh, you know, make you, make you feel okay about, um, not completing exercises and stuff like he's going to push you to, to achieve what you, what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. And, um, the, the last question I have for you on relatedness here, um, mm -hmm. is, uh, we, we've, you've answered this as far as autonomy goes, you've answered this as far as competence go, but let's ask you this though, on relatedness, um, in order to achieve your goals for your personal training program, uh, how important was relatedness so that you were successful in tr achieving your personal training goals? Um, I, I think it was really important, I, I do, because um, it kind of goes hand in hand with like, I, I think kind of like trust and connection with the person that you're working with. So um, I feel that if I didn't feel that I uh, related to the person or, or had some type of mutual connection or bond with, uh, with him, then I'm sure that I wouldn't have maybe performed as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now let's bring in autonomy and competence back into this along with relatedness, these three components. Now that we kind of understand these uh, as it relates to your own personal training program and experience. Um, autonomy, competence, relatedness, how do you answer this question? Would you say that out of those three components, uh, is one the highest and is 
and the next one, the second highest, and the third one is the least, or are they equally uh, just 33% each just as important to make that 100%? How does that pie look like to you if you were to slice all three of these into a slice? Uh, if you can, um, do you know what that looks like for you, for yourself? If you had to rank them in order from most important to least important, uh, what would that look like if you had to think about that for those three components? Um, I definitely place autonomy at the the, the top for sure, mm. because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no one can make you do something that you don't want to do. Mm. Um, you know, it's up to you to to make sure you go, you, you follow all the regimens, um, you know, from a nutrition standpoint or, you know, really put in all your effort in the gym. That's completely up to you. Show up mm -hmm. to the sessions. Mm -hmm. So it starts with you. Mm -hmm. um, the incompetence. I would definitely put that next. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to understand what, what you're doing or why you're doing it. Um, you know, uh, why you're eating certain things. Why aren't you eating certain things? Why are you doing this exercise opposed to, you know, different exercise? Well, what groups of muscles are they working? So I'd say, you know, the understanding and knowledge is next. Okay. And um, relatedness, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I think that's like the extra push that'll make you feel really good about your trainer and um, feel good about working with them and looking forward to, to doing the next sections. I mean, looking forward to continuing the sessions, um, you know, and uh, advancing your relationship with the person from a, prefer from a personal trainer standpoint. But at the end of the day, I think as long as the trainer is good, um, even if you may not relate to that person as much, the um you know your will and the autonomy and um the competence and understanding of what you're what you're doing should you should still kind of uh i feel like you you're, you're going to be good and should be able to reach your goals even if you don't relate to the person as much mm -hmm. okay okay very good um excellent now uh my last question to you before we confirm your demographic information is uh, how does your generation, you, the millennials, how do you compare to other generations in terms of self-determination? Um, I don't even think you can break that down from a generation thing. I think that just depends on the person, honestly. Mm, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, before I leave the uh, uh, questions for you to ask, um, and final comments. Um, if you don't mind, can we please go ahead and confirm your demographic information that you uh, provided for us? I'm going to go ahead and read it and then just please let me know if it's correct. All right. And uh, just so you know, when you originally sent this, it did come out where you highlighted it, those uh, questions three, four, and five. And for some reason, when I printed it, um, it didn't show up the first time. So you already answered these. But uh, just to confirm, um, on the demographics, you are a 27 year old uh, Black African male. African American male. Um, number, uh, the, the number of, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, how long you've been working out with a personal trainer? Uh, six months to one year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, on average, how many times have you worked out with your personal trainer? And um, we answered once per week? Yes. Okay. And then the last two questions um, beginning body fat percentage was 26%, ending body fat percentage 21%, net loss of 5%. Yes. Okay. And then finally, you kind of answered this already in the earlier um, questions. Uh, beginning weight, roughly 178 pounds, losing 11 pounds to get down to 167 pounds. Correct. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, that concludes my portion of the interview. I just want to leave this time now. Do you have any final comments or questions that you'd like to ask uh, regarding the interview? Uh, no, no final questions. I guess um, I was reading that um what this is going to be it's possibly uh data that's going to be published yes very uh, correct uh, i'm glad you asked that so i want to let you know that it will be published as part of a final study uh dissertation uh, the date target for that is that uh we i'd like to get this personally published um and approved by march so we're looking at maybe two more months um, however, uh, I will send you your transcript of this interview that we just did, and um, that way you'll get to uh, have the opportunity, as we mentioned, to member check. But 
in addition to that, um, when the final district dissertation is finished, I'll make sure that I send you um, a copy of uh, the link so you can read it. And what's really neat about it is that you could see how you um, are compared to others in this final sample of millennials who are in Atlanta, Georgia, such as yourself, working out with a personal trainer for um, achieving goals. So it'll be really interesting. You'll be able to compare and see, you know, where you're at. And uh, in this unique study, when you see the data and you will see yourself, obviously not your name, but you'll know who you are when you, you know, look at the demographics and how you compare to the others in your sample group. Um, so I think that's personally just fascinating, you know, to be able to see that and you'll be able to find out how other millennials um, in your uh, category compare to yourself um, when they answered uh, the questions to this survey and, and this interview. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely looking forward to that. Great. I'm, I'm really happy you uh, said that because uh, that, that more than, you know, your time and, and um, efforts into doing this, it, it, I think that it's really insightful and it'll be very beneficial to uh, providing you some good information. That's my hope is that you get as much out of this as uh, I do. Yeah, for sure. So I guess a quick question. So are you uh, are you a personal trainer? Or are you going to be a personal trainer? Yes. Just so you know, um, I personally have my own personal training business. Um, I, um, uh, I've, I've been a personal trainer technically for about 20 years. And uh, what I'm doing right now is just uh, this is the final piece of um, research towards my study that I need to um, have approved and finalized so that I can graduate from uh, Grand Canyon University. Oh, nice. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I can't thank you enough. I really do appreciate um, your time and help. And uh, this has just been so helpful. Um, you did so well on the interview. And uh, I'm really excited uh, to see when this comes to fruition so we could see this on paper. And, um, you know, again, I'll make sure I get the uh, audio file and the transcripts that sent your way as well. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, um, definitely reach out if you, uh, if you need anything else. Will do. I'm going to stop the recording now. Mm -hmm.